家好，今天这个视频呢是基于我之前做的一个口语提高视频，因为我在这个视频当中有提到这个记忆软件 Anki， 所以呢，所以有些朋友要求我做一个演示视频呢。那么这个二月份的 Monthly Chat， 我想借这个机会跟大家聊聊这个软件 Anki。我自己本身其实并没有用过这个软件，但是因为 Gavin 他在当年学中文的时候，他天天在用，所以我感觉我自己好像很熟悉，感觉自己用过一样。那据他说是他用过最好的记忆软件，所以说我觉得他是最有发言权，所以所以我今天邀请他来给大家演示一下。呃，因为他是用这个 screenshot， 他自己没有出镜，所以对于有些朋友来说呢，他的这个讲的有点快，所以我想在这个他。这个开始讲之前，我想简单的给大家解释一下。如果大家想先练练听力，想看看自己到底能不能听懂，可以先只先跳到他的部分，呃，听完他的再来听我解释，都 OK。其实 Anki 其实是一个高效的这个提高记忆的一个软件，所以所以大家不光可以把它拿来学语言，也可以学任何的知识点。我觉得首先想问大家呢，通常你在要。呃，这个记一些知识点，记一些单词的时候，大家通常都用什么样的方法？嗯，可能很多人都会拿笔记本，然后从第一页记到最后一页看重点，或者是说背单词的时候从 A 背到 Z。那其实，呃、嗯，想要有效的来记忆呢，这个不能单纯的去看笔记，啊、呃，大家需要强迫自己的大脑来 recall。所以 Anki 这个软件它采取了 test 这样的形式，就是一个 question， 然后 answer， 问答的形式。呃，比如说，就像大家看到的这种 flash card， 那你的正面是图案，那么反面就是它的答案。所以每一个 flash card 就像是一个自我测试，所以这样的这个互动更 active， 了，比起大家单方面的去。单方面去看笔记，这样的 active 的方式会更有效。在大家会在 Gavin 的讲解当中呢，听到非常多的听到一个叫做 space repetition， 就是间间隔记忆，以及呢会在一开始他的讲解当中看到一个遗忘曲线图，这两个点都非常非常重要，所以大家这个也可以在网上去搜一搜，所以如果不明白的话。啊、uh, ，那么他会聊到一个非常重要的这个问题是什么时候来复习你的这些 flash card， 什么时候来复习你这些知识点？呃、uh, ，最好的时间呢是最好的时机是你在遗忘他们之前。如果你忘记的话，你需要花时间，你需要花更多时间来来记忆，重新记忆这些知识点。所以，如何来知道你自己什么时候会忘记这些知识点呢？呃、uh, ，这就是 Anki。非常神奇的地方，它利用人的这个人均遗忘率，它遵循记忆这个曲线，新知识呢重复频率高，那么旧的知识呢慢慢的这个重复频率低，遗忘的知识多复习呢，已经牢牢掌握的知识就少复习。嗯、我给大家打个比方，那我手上有一堆 flash card， 那么这就好像是大家的这个，呃，在 Anki 当中输入的这个问题 question， 每次大家在这个。在过你的这个 Anki 当中的问题的时候，打比方说，这第一个是一个 socks， 啊袜子。所以当你看到袜子的时候说，说啊 easy， 那么你知道这个是袜子，你答对了，中文是袜子。那么大家就会在这个问题的下面呢，看到有三个这个 button， 一个呢是答对了的 button， 一个是 difficult， 一个是 wrong。当你这个问题答对了的话呢，这个问题呢就会被。这个储存到在软件当中储存到这个呃对的这个记忆区，呃，比如说下面这个呢，大家在看到是，比如说是 fish 啊，你看到这个 fish 它是什么意思呢？你好像觉得好像是鱼，但是又不确定的话，你就可以到 difficult 就放到 difficult 这个这个区当中啊、呃。那么在看到 coat 的时候呢，你完全不知道，你就可以放到这个。可以，比如说放到 wrong 里面去，啊，所有的知识点在你这个复习的时候就会被 Anki 放在它的不同的这个区里面去。那么，呃，放到这个 right 这个 right 这个区，那么它你你熟知的这个这个这这些问题，那么它重复的频率就会
，呃，就会少一些。那么这个 difficult 慢慢慢，它这个 difficult 的这个区的这个问题，它会重复的多。那么答错了的这个肯定是重复的最高的。所以慢慢慢，你每天复习的时候呢，它的会根据你每一次的这个这个 active 这种 answer question 的这个这个这个结果来。Locate 你这些 card 应该放哪个区，所以都是所有都是 computer base， 所以说这点非常好，比起你自己单纯看笔记来说，效率高多了。随着大家这个回答问题的这个频率，呃，那么可能这个 difficult 的部分都慢慢挪到这个 right 的部分，那么这个 wrong 的呢，可能挪到慢慢挪到 difficult， 然后慢慢的从 difficult 挪到 right， 所以说最终呢，你的这个所有的知识点都能够打对。这也是呃，安琪的目标，也是你的目标。所以安琪他会标记你遗忘的知识点，能够让你每次的复习就更有针对性。那最后呢，唠叨一句，就是安琪它里面所有的这些 flash card 这些问题，基本上都是需要大家自己输入的。然后也可以加音频，你可以加。反正很多它的这个 feature 名词在里面，大家都可以去拿来这个钻研一下。然后这个可能一开始在你。建立它 data 的时候是需要花时间，但你一旦呢建立进去了，你会觉得非常值，好吧？这个我废话不多说了，希望我的解释能够给大家带来一些小帮助，然后希望大家能够喜欢这个视频。有任何问题给我们 comment。Today we got asked a question、um, about how to use Anki, which is a spaced repetition software. So what we're going to do is two things: explain what spaced repetition is, because it's a bit weird. And then after we've explained what it is a little bit, we're going to look at the program itself,、um, kind of how you use it, what it is, how I used it, and how it can help you. So、um, first, space repetition, which is、um, when psychologists looked at the way you learnt, they came up with a few things that they found that make you a lot better at remembering things. And since learning a language is basically remembering things, they can really help you learn a language、uh, a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently. So、um, they found out two main things about the way you learn. If you want to learn something really well, if you want to remember something really well, sorry, the first one is that you have to be active in the way you try and remember it, which means that you can't just look at something. You have to actually actively give something. So it's like you have to answer a question or do something, and that. Activeness in what you do helps you remember it. So in the case of Anki, it's like a flashcard. So you have a question, and then you give the answer, which is active, and that helps it. It helps you remember the thing that you want to remember more.、Um, the second thing is when you review and when you look at what you're remembering. So this is a little bit weird. The best time to review something. Is right before you're going to forget it, because once you've forgotten it, then you have to relearn it, which takes a lot of effort. But if you do it before you're going to forget it, then you're reviewing something, you're looking at something when you don't need to, because you're still going to remember it. The problem is knowing when you're going to forget something, because nobody really knows when they're going to forget something.、Um, but the psychologist who researched this. Realize that everybody forgets at the same speed, or it's so close that they can predict it very accurately. So if I teach you something now, then you can predict accurately when you're going to forget that, because everybody forgets at the same speed. So this is what this graph is here. It's called a forgetting curve. So it shows you when you memorize something, and then from that, the time on the bottom, it shows you the percentage on the side. So that's a percentage. That's a percentage, and that's a time, and then you can see accurately the how much percent chance you have of remembering something, given the time that you first memorized it. So this is built into Anki. Anki knows when you're going to forget something. So what it does is it brings up the things that you are just going to forget on that day, and then you review only the things that you're just about to forget. So you don't do. You never forget stuff. Or you forget stuff a lot less, and then you never review stuff that you don't need to because you'd still remember it. So this is what makes it a lot more efficient. So normally, when you learn, you remember about thirty percent of what you learn. If you use Anki, you can get up to like seventy, eighty, ninety percent of what you learn. So it really does have、um, a massive effect on on the way you remember things. So we can have a look.
this is Anki. So I used to have a massive big deck. This is one I've just made um, for Chinese. So we'll click on that. So this is what you'll see when you go in and we'll start learning. So what happens is just like a flashcard. So the way I used to learn is I would watch my favorite films and then I would take sentences from my favorite films and put them into Anki. So you can do that. So you can either get sentences offline that people have already made for free for you if you don't want to put them in. Or if you do, you can take anything that you want. So the two things that I did, I got sentences off um, films and I use it to learn characters. So we've got two cards to show that. So this is what I used to do. So what I'd do is I'd read it to make sure that I got all the tones right. So you can see as you go along, you'd read it. And then if I got the tones right, so you go along, read it, read it, read it. So then you can see the answer. So you see I also got the audio off there so I could listen to it. And that was one of the most useful things. So it's having the audio and having it repeated again and again and again was really useful to your pronunciation. And you can see on the bottom you've got three choices, whether you got it right, whether it was difficult, or whether you got it completely wrong. And based on those, the computer will decide what the best time is for you to um, review it again. So obviously if you remember something really well, if I get if I read this and get the tones right all the time, and I'm really confident that I'm, I'm happy with this sentence, I can keep saying, yeah, this is really easy for me. And the intervals in between will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Whereas if I say this is difficult and I'm struggling and I can't remember the tones, the intervals will get smaller and smaller and smaller and it'll keep showing me again and again and again a lot. So you end up that you see the things that you're struggling on more and the things that you find easy less, which again makes it more efficient. So the other way is it shows you a character. So I want to learn the pronunciation. So I know that it's hu, which is the third tone. Hu. And that's right. So I would say that's right. But if I said it was wrong, that would come up again the same. It would come up more often so that I'd do it. So that's basically the program there. It's really, really simple. It's not, there's nothing special. It doesn't look amazing, but it makes a massive difference to the way you learn. So when I started learning Chinese characters, I remember I used to sit down and write one character like 300 times in a day. And then like, you know, two days later, I would have forgotten it. When I used Anki, I only wrote each character, I think I worked out each character, I only wrote it 48 times. So I only wrote each character 48 times, but because the computer spread it out and it made it as efficient as possible, that meant I could learn, I learned over about 5,000 characters in six months. And I only wrote each one of them 48 times. But because um, I used space repetition, it was done really efficiently, so that's all I needed to do to remember all those characters. So obviously I didn't write each character 48 times. The one that I struggled on and found harder, I would have written more. The ones that were super easy, I would have written less. But the computer managed it so that um, it made it the best possible, best possible way to do it.